Jake DeBrusque remains the talk of the town following his winter classic heroics. And we are updating the Eastern Conference power rankings here on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. Today, I hope you've all recovered from yesterday's winter classic. Back at work for most of us, I would assume. And we are here talking about our Boston Bruins after they defeated the Pittsburgh Penguins 2-1 Two to one at Fenway Park yesterday. Before we get into that a bit more, quick reminder that the podcast is free and available on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get podcasts. Please do smash that subscribe button. Each new episode automatically added to your feeds for you to download, listen, and enjoy. The podcast also available on YouTube in video form. And you can also find some breaking news bonus content over there, as well as some post-game reactions. What else should I mention? Follow the podcast on Twitter, Instagram, at LockedNHLBruins. And you can find me, my dad jokes, hockey tweets, a lifelong Bruins fan. Been covering this team for various outlets for 18 years now, I think. And... Formerly a full-time news editor at The Score, wrote for SB Nation, currently writing for Owner's Box, and soon to be writing for Locked On, which we will uh, hopefully get going here in the next uh, couple of weeks. All right, Jake DeBrusque, I talked about him yesterday after the Winter Classic, saying that he's the kind of game-breaking forward that many people want the Bruins to trade for at the deadline heading into the postseason and Nick Foligno I think said it best after the game yesterday saying become a man on a mission this year he's really excited about the opportunity he's got I mean who wouldn't be excited about playing on the Boston Bruins top line alongside Brad Marchand and Patrice on two guys who will likely have their numbers retired. Two guys who will likely be in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Felino added he's really pushing the opportunity he has with the players he's playing with. Don't forget, DeBrusque looked up to Taylor Hall when he was a young kid growing up in Edmonton. And Hall was the Oilers' first overall. He is a guy that's really grown up, even from last year, going through some of the things we went through as a group. He's hit the ground running here, battled and fought his way, and he's been a big-time player for us, of course. We all know Jake DeBrusque's struggles through COVID-19, not only with the virus itself, but... Mentally, with lockdown restrictions, he's a very social guy. And he really struggled with the isolating lockdown protocols that came with COVID-19, as did a lot of us. DeBrusque also struggled under former head coach Bruce Cassidy. He had a trade request that was made public. Things started to turn around early 2022 when he was bumped up to the top line. He signed a contract extension on trade deadline day. Many thought that was a domino that could make a trade easier as there would be some cost and contract certainty for acquiring teams. What it's done is solidified DeBrusque as a go-to game-breaking player for the Boston Bruins. 
Head coach Jim Montgomery said he's a lot tougher than people think. He's more committed than people are aware. And because of those things, his game is going. He's matured, and you can see it. He's on pace for over 30 goals. And it doesn't matter where Montgomery uses him. He seems to spark the people he plays with. That's one thing that's really jumped out to me over the last little bit with Jake DeBrusque. We expect him to be that energy guy out there. We expect him to create some scoring chances. But he's also been used quite heavily on the penalty kill as well. I never anticipated Jake DeBrusque becoming a reliable penalty killer for the Boston Bruins, but here he is, and it's become a big part of his game and an important part of Boston's league kill. Right now, he's on pace for 35 goals, 31 assists over the course of 82 games. He missed a couple games early on, uh, so this is his 80-game pace. 66 points, he would set career highs across the board if this continues. He would also become the kind of guy that Boston envisioned when they drafted him in the first round back in 2015. So DeBrusque, a man on a man, as important to the Bruins' success right now as anybody else. And he proved that yesterday when it came to stepping up on the big stage and solidifying himself as a Bruins legend on the field at Fenway Park. Felino added, you only remember the ones you win. We've got to find a way to win this one. And now they'll look back on this as one of the best memories of their careers. In fact, Nick Felino was instrumental in this victory. He asked for the room during the second intermission. And he said to the team, this is an event. It's a dream come true. We don't want to waste it. You don't want to come after a game like this and think you could have done more. We know that we can do anything together as a group. We're the best third period team in the league. Let's go and prove it. And that's exactly what they did. And this is the kind of leadership the Bruins will need in the playoffs as well. To be in the Stanley Cup playoffs, dream come true. To be on a team this good, a dream come true, and you don't want to waste it. You don't want to go into the playoffs and think you could have done more. So as the Bruins move towards the postseason, uh, you'll see this leadership group continue to step up and continue to ram that home that they don't want to waste this opportunity. The Bruins remain the number one team in the Eastern Conference. And we're going to up the power rankings here after the break. But first, today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From the pro football schedule to the college bowl season, NHL, basketball, they've got it all at betonline.net. They're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. You can head to the website today, use your mobile device to learn more at betonline.net. All right, let's take a look at the Eastern Conference Power Ranking, shall we? In the first couple months of the season, I took a look at the Atlantic division. We expected that there would be some um, narrowing of the gap between last season's top four teams and the bottom four teams. That has shifted a bit, but we're looking at the conference as a whole because we know that the first 
And second, or the first place team in each division will play the wild card teams. And the way the NHL playoff format is at the moment, you could have three teams from one division and five from another making the playoffs, meaning the Bruins could very well play a Metropolitan Division team in the first round, provided they hang on to the top spot in the Atlantic. Right now, they have a 10-point lead over the Toronto Maple Leafs, each with 37 games played. They're 15 points up on third place Tampa. Tampa does have two games in hand, however. So let's look at the Eastern Conference as a whole. And there's a bunch of teams that we can pretty much write off from the get-go in terms of playoff contention. First of all, Columbus Blue Jackets, well down in 16th place. They're nine points back of 15th place Montreal. The Canadians, Flyers, unlikely to make a run at a playoff spot, being... 11 and nine points back respectively. One of the big surprises is Florida Panthers currently down in 13th place in total points and 13th as well in point percentage. Those are the four teams currently under 500. The Florida Panthers, we all recall, won the President's Trophy last season. Currently below 500 and... It's going to take a miracle for them to get back to the playoffs after winning the President's Trophy. At an even 500 right now in 12th place is the Ottawa Senators. They're 6-3-1 over their last 10 games, including the win last week over our Boston Bruins. Also coming from the Atlantic, but... A bit outside the playoff race right now are the Buffalo Sabres, 543 point percentage and a plus 20 goal differential. The Detroit Red Wings have a 557 point percentage and a minus seven goal differential. Both of those teams are outside the playoff race. Buffalo's six points back of the Pittsburgh Penguins with two games in hand. And Detroit also behind. They're five points back with two games in hand on the Pittsburgh Penguins. Who are the teams currently in the playoff picture? Well, right now the wildcard teams are the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. 44 points, 595 point percentage, a plus 11 goal differential, and the New York Rangers. They have 46 points, 605 point percentage, and a plus 17 goal differential. Kicking around as well is the New York Islanders. They have a 579 point percentage. They're tied in points with Pittsburgh, but they played one more game. They have a plus 16 goal differential. So those are three really good teams in the middle of the pack in the Eastern Conference fighting for those two wildcard spots. When it comes to an Atlantic team that could make the jump up, I'd give the edge to the Buffalo Sabres because A, they're pretty hot right now, 7-2-1, and one, despite uh, losing their last game. They beat the Bruins, of course, uh, before the calendar turned to 2023 and they have the league's top offense at the moment and a plus 20 goal differential in fact in the eastern conference they have the sixth best goal differential ahead of washington the rangers the islanders and the penguins all of whom are a bit closer to a playoff spot than buffalo So those are the teams kind of on the bubble right now in terms of the playoff picture. The Rangers with a slight edge over Washington in point percentage. Then you have Pittsburgh and the Islanders 
all fighting for that playoff spot. That brings us to the top six teams in the Eastern Conference. We'll talk about them here after the break. I want to thank you once again for making Locked On Boston Bruins part of your day every day. For your second listen, check out the Locked On NHL Prospects podcast. It's a daily show covering the next generation of hockey superstars leading up to the NHL draft. Locked On NHL Prospects available on YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. Speaking of prospects, we'll touch on a couple Bruins prospects here in a moment in terms of how they're doing at the World Junior, but let's wrap up the Eastern Conference power rankings first. So going top to bottom, or sorry, bottom and top, Columbus, Montreal, Philadelphia, Florida, Ottawa, Detroit, Buffalo. Those are your bottom seven teams at the moment. If we're going to move up to the top nine, top eight, you have the Islanders kicking it in ninth, the Penguins in eighth, and the Capitals currently in seventh. Although they have one point more than the New York Rangers, the Rangers have a game in hand and a better point percentage. So I'm putting the Rangers in sixth right now. The top five teams, there's a bit of separation. These teams have been better for the majority of the season than the players lower, which makes sense. That's why they have better records. Although the New Jersey Devils have really taken a tumble. They're in fifth this week. 662 point percentage, a plus 27 goal differential, but they're 2-6-2 and two over their last 10 games. And... They still have a three-point lead over the Rangers, a two-point lead over uh, the Capitals. But the way they're tumbling right now, I'm not going to say they're going to fall out of a playoff spot, but if they keep going the way they are, then that's certainly a possibility. In fourth, I'm putting the Tampa Bay Lightning. They have a 671 point percentage, a record of 23-11-1. Plus 24 goal differential, 8-2 and two over their last 10. They've won three in a row, and the Lightning are who they are. The reigning Eastern Conference champions, they won the Cup two years running prior to Colorado bumping them off the podium and are still as good as ever. The top three, Toronto Maple Leafs right now, they are 23, 8, and 6, 703 point percentage, plus 31 goal differential, 7 and 3 over their last 10 games. Yet they still remain 10 points back of the Bruins for first in the Atlantic and in the Eastern Conference. The Carolina Hurricanes are creeping up a bit. They've won, well, not a bit. They're six points back of the Bruins, a seven. 57 point percentage. They've won 11 games in a row, still six points back of Boston and only a plus 24 goal differential, which puts them fourth in the conference. So as hot as they've been, they still can't catch our Boston Bruins who have 62 points through 37 games, a record of 29, four and four and eight thirty eight point percentage and a plus 57 goal differential, which is 26 better than second place Toronto at plus 31. Quite a bit better than the best team in the West, the Dallas Stars, who are at plus 33. If the playoffs were to begin right now, the Bruins would be playing the Pittsburgh Penguins in the first round, the team they just beat yesterday in the Winter Classic. And they are struggling a bit right now. Obviously, they're still more than half the season, so it's a bit too early left to be talking about playoff matchups. But that just gives you a look at 
who the Bruins are in line to play. Right now, it certainly looks like there will be five Metro teams and three Atlantic teams, unless the Detroit Red Wings get healthy and are able to uh, rise up a bit, and unless the Buffalo Sabres can continue their uh, offensive explosion, get a bit more defense, and um, continue to rise in the Eastern Conference standings. So that gives you a little look at the picture in the Eastern Conference at the moment. Before we wrap up, a bit of a, a update from the World Junior Championship, which is taking place in uh, Halifax at the moment. Sweden advancing to the semifinals. They will play um, the Czech Republic, I believe, in the semis after beating Finland yesterday. Fabian Lysel hasn't had a huge explosion here at the World Juniors. He hit the post a couple times uh, yesterday and... You know, hasn't really kind of broken out the way we might have hoped he would at the World Juniors. Uh, he had to miss a game or two, I believe, uh, early on in the tournament. And uh, just checking his stats here. I'm not even sure how many points he's put up at the World Juniors. But having said that, he will get a chance to medal at least as Sweden is off to the semifinals. At this tournament, he has played in five games, and he's pointless right now for Team Sweden. I don't know if he's been battling injury or illness, but uh, not a very successful tournament so far for the, uh, for the Swedish Phenom. I'm just trying to get a sense here of what the uh, semifinal round will actually look like at the World Juniors. We do know that uh, Canada will take on USA in one semifinal. And it will be Sweden taking on, yes, the Czech Republic. And Latvia will... Uh, oh, I'm sorry here. I'm really mixed up. <laughs> so Canada will take on USA in one semifinal. It will be Sweden, Czech Republic at another. And I wanted to mention Dan's Luck Mellis, who played for Latvia in this tournament. He, he having a very strong showing over there as he has uh, put in some strong work for the Latvian squad. Five games, scoring two goals for them as he uh, looks to build off being selected in the fourth round of the 2022 draft by the Boston Bruins. Need another coffee here, obviously. Anyways, that's the Eastern Conference Power Rankings. That's the latest from the World Juniors. Semifinals will go tomorrow. Keep an eye on Lysel playing the Czech Republic. Hopefully he can break out. and. Canada, USA will obviously be one to watch. Connor Bedard, just unreal so far for Canada in this tournament. Uh, but on the other end, there's been some dynamic performances for uh, Team USA as well, including Luke Hughes from the New Jersey Devils. They are well stocked when it comes to defensive prospects with Hughes and uh, Simon Nemec, who played uh, a great game for Slovakia yesterday. That's today's episode, my friends. Thank you so much for bearing with me through that rough ending, for joining me on today's podcast. We'll be back tomorrow with some mailbag questions. If you have any to begin the new year, please do send them over to Locked NHL Bruins on Twitter, Instagram, or at ENC McLaren today to Los Angeles to uh, get ready for their 
game on Thursday to kick off a three-game California road trip. We'll be all over that, of course, here on the Locked On Boston Ruins podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day. Take care, friends.